So, welcome back to another video. This is Team Overclocked, and today we're talking about AMD Ryzen and what AMD is going to be doing with this new lineup of CPUs. Today, I'll be covering everything we know about the CPU architecture, its new motherboards, along with a bunch of new features and other things that this lineup of CPUs is going to feature. So stay tuned to find out what those are. Now AMD Ryzen is a new lineup of CPUs AMD is looking to put out by Q1 2017. After being lazy and not releasing any major CPUs for the past 5 to 6 years, they have finally put something new on the table ready to be released. The exact release date has not been announced yet, but we do know that it will come out before the end of March as AMD has promised that it will be getting the desktop level of CPUs out before the end of Q1 2017. Chances are that AMD will announce the Ryzen chips and their exact specs at GDC 2017 which will take place from February 27 to March 3rd. So we'll see how that turns out. But meanwhile, let's just get into the improvements Zen is going to be making. To start it off, Zen is going to be introducing DDR4 RAM into the AMD CPU ecosystem. This has been available from Intel on their mainstream chips for a year and a half already with their Skylake chips so it is about time AMD has finally caught up in this regard. DDR4 is going to allow for better performance over DDR3 due to its higher clock speeds, lower power consumptions, and lower latencies. For AMD's APUs, this will lead to faster gaming performance by a pretty long shot because they heavily rely on how powerful your RAM is because AMD APUs have integrated GPUs that don't have any dedicated VRAM so they rely on system RAM to fulfill their video RAM needs. When it comes to APUs, AMD is reporting that it will be reshaping the current FM2 Plus Godavari APUs to fit on the AM4 socket. They won't be receiving any performance improvements, but they will be acceptable for the time being. Their Ryzen APUs will be set to release in late 2017, so we'll see how that turns out and hopefully they make some pretty big leaps and bounds in that category of CPUs as well. Now another great feature AMD is introducing is simultaneous multi-threading which acts like Intel hyper-threading on AMD's Ryzen CPUs. On CPUs with this feature, it would allow for each core on a CPU to have two threads rather than one which would increase the thread count and make it better when it comes to performing in CPU heavy tasks like video editing and live streaming. And since you're only adding extra threads rather than extra cores, you're still going to get the same strong single core performance which should lead to pretty good gaming performance and performance overall doing things that aren't as thread heavy like video editing. Now when it comes to motherboards, AMD is going to be releasing a variety of chipsets. Now AMD is going to be keeping one socket, the AM4 socket, for both their very high end enthusiast grade chips along with the very low budget end chips. So they must have a lot of chipsets in order to cover the enthusiasts along with the budget end gamers. They're going to be receiving many of the latest and greatest features that many of the other Intel motherboards have been getting for the past year or so, like M.2 slots, USB 3.0 and 3.1, 
USB Type-C along with PCIe 3.0 which has been out for a little while. When it comes to overclocking, all Zen CPUs will be overclockable, but you will need to buy an X300, B350, or X370 motherboard to overclock. All around, these are some great looking motherboards and they'll be fitting the needs of Ryzen chips and their owners very well. Now this graph shows that Zen CPUs will have a 40% increase in IPC or instructions per clock over their excavator CPUs. IPC is a measurement of how many actions a CPU core can carry out per clock cycle. AMD CPUs have suffered from lower IPCs since they have favored weaker cores and higher thread count or higher core count over stronger cores and smaller thread and core count. Now this has been Intel's main leading factor which is why Intel has been leading the gaming and enthusiast grade CPU market for a while now and this has definitely been AMD's weak point for the past 5-6 to six years which they're trying to cover up with these new Ryzen CPUs. Now how will these Ryzen CPUs compare to Intel's Kaby Lake CPUs when it comes to head to head performance with IPC? Now if we have the excavator core equal 1 in this model, it would make Intel's newest Kaby Lake chip equal 1.65 since it has a 65% higher IPC than excavator. This would mean that AMD's Ryzen chips which are 40% faster, would receive a IPC score of 1.4 in this model. That is a large performance over Excavator, and this makes it only about 10-15% to slower than Intel's cable-like CPUs. And this is for clock-for-clock -clock performance. If AMD bumps up their clock speeds by 10-15%, to based on their comparable Intel CPUs, then Intel and AMD CPUs, at least the Ryzen and Kaby Lake variants, will have equivalent performance and this should allow AMD Ryzen CPUs to look very appealing to a wider audience. Now AMD for the first time in a very long time is going to be making an appearance in the high-end enthusiast grade market. Now we've already mentioned this a few times when talking about the motherboards, but this will mean Intel is finally going to have to drop the prices of their high-end x99 CPUs to compete with these Ryzen CPUs. AMD had a demo at CES 2017 and one of the demos featured a Ryzen 8 core 16 thread CPU clocked at 3.4 GHz which was keeping up with the Intel i7 6900K and 8 core 16 thread x99 CPU from Intel very well. Now this is great to see because it means AMD is paying attention to the high end market which Intel has had a monopoly in for a very long time. Rumors are also saying that these Ryzen CPUs could feature up to 16 cores and 32 threads for the desktop flagships and for the server grade stuff it could feature 32 cores and 64 threads which is really fast and should allow for some great multitasking. This is definitely going to push down those high-end i7 prices, especially with Intel price hiking their flagship CPUs since their 6950X, their current flagship CPU, is priced at $1,700. For the past 6 or 7 years, Intel has always priced their CPUs that are their flagship models at around a thousand and this is really alarming but AMD's Ryzen CPUs will put an end to this. Now that leaves us with one question. What will the Ryzen CPU lineup itself look like 
in terms of pricing and specs. Based on what we've said and seen so far, I'm guessing that there will be something like a quad-core Ryzen chip at around $140 to $150, then maybe a 4-core 8-thread CPU that has simultaneous multi-threading at the $250 price point, and then maybe a 6-core 12-thread CPU which also features simultaneous multi-threading at the $340 to $350 price point. When compared to Intel's consumer lineup of i3s, i5s, and i7s, we can begin to see how they will have to drop the prices to compete. And that is exactly what AMD Ryzen is going to do, and that's why people should be excited for this new lineup, since it will drive prices down and make higher quality CPUs cheaper for the average consumer, and that's the most important thing to come from all of this. So yeah guys, if you have any comments, please leave them down below in the comments section about AMD Ryzen and Zen and what you think they're going to be releasing. And yeah guys, that's all for today. If you liked the video, please overclock the like button. If you didn't like it, please dislike this video and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.